Here we are folks uh, from Israel on the Sea of Galilee. We're having a great time here. We are literally on the banks of the Sea of Galilee. Behind me over around the bend is actually the city of Tiberias. If you pan around on, on the other side of the rocks here would be the city of Magdala where Mary Magdala was raised. Behind us uh, to the north would be the city of Capernaum where Jesus uh, did most of his earthly ministry and we are very pleased and proud to be here. It's been a great time. The weather is great. Here we are uh, about uh, 7 o'clock a little after in the morning. We've actually seen the sun come up this morning. We are so pleased to be here and uh, we just wish you the best there in uh, Lakeview and we hope you have a great service this morning. And I tell you what, when everything that we do, we just want to praise the Lord. So uh, from our group this morning, we like to say shalom from Israel. That's the city of Gennesaret right there. And then up on the hill is the area of Magdala. And that's the building where the Galilee boat or the Jesus boat as it's sometimes called is located. And then as we pan we're going north as we're panning the picture here. And up in the distance there is the, will be the ruins of the Sea of Galilee. I'm sorry, the ruins of the city of Capernaum as we pan north. Is actually, it, it, it's told in three of our, our books, in Matthew and in Mark and in, and in John. And it's really my favorite um, <coughs> verse to, to speak on. And if you'll if you'll think about the, where we are and and what we're doing here, back behind me the, on those mountains there is where uh, Jesus fed the five thousand. So in that area there, uh, right over in here is where he fed the five thousand. They were going across the lake. When he sent the disciples on ahead, he was sending them across this lake or sea if you will and he was sending them to Capernaum but whenever you'll see you'll see as we read the scripture that they end up in Gennesaret they end up right there where we came from and so there was uh, when the people were over there the people that were uh, that Jesus had dispersed when he dispersed the 5,000 and he was sent his disciples ahead they noticed because they were there that he didn't get on a boat and so they were waiting on him to come back down from the mountain or to come down because they were wanting to be around Jesus. But then later on they found out that instead of Jesus being there, he was over here in Gennesaret because he followed the guys uh, on, the, on the waters we well know. So we're going to turn over into the, to the book of Matthew in uh, chapter 14. And I'm going to make some points here and, and, and we'll move on. But, but um, in, in Matthew chapter 14 verse 22, it says immediately... Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of them to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. I think that's that's pretty cool because Jesus said, uh, you, you guys go ahead and get in the boat. It makes me think that Jesus already had something in mind, but but that word that word made in there uh, has with it a sense of urgency. If it were if you were in the Greek there, it would be, you guys get in the boat quick. Go do it right now. It, it, it's kind of like uh, when, uh, when uh, our, our, our guide, Zaif, tells us not to, uh, uh, not to take any more pictures anymore, David. <laughs> he did it with a sense of urgency. He was saying, oh, we want you to get into the boat right now. Get in there quickly. I guess that is uh, the police force making sure that we're all in good shape here. Um, I hope it's an Israeli police force. Hold us up for a second, Don. So when he when he asked them to get into the boat and go to the other side, he did so with, with some force. He was being assertive. He said, get in the boat right now. You go on to the other side. I can imagine the disciples saying, well, what are you going to do with all these people? They were already crowding around Jesus. We had thousands of people that were crowding around Jesus, and he was up. Uh, he was teaching them, and then that came to the time where you know they fed the 5,000 people. After all that feeding was taking place, they gathered up all the baskets full, and uh, Jesus said, okay, you guys get on the boat, go to the other side. And it was, it was not something that was left open for question. It wasn't something that was left over for debate. Jesus said it in such a way that the guy said, okay, we're out of here. 
then I didn't go over there. Okay. Yeah. I'm talking about years ago. Okay. Sorry, I'll, let me catch you up to where I am. Yes. But anyway, uh, there's all kinds of tombs and stuff in this, or caves that could be used for tombs, and that would probably be the area that the the the, the demon, yeah the, the legend. It legend. would be the uh, the Decapolis people of the Decapolis is over here would be raising their swines, their mm -hmm. their animals, the the pigs, and uh, Jesus came over there with his disciples. He got out, and the demon possessed man came to meet him. And if you remember, Scripture says the demon-possessed man fell down before Jesus and says, "What are we to do with you, uh, son of David?" You know, and and uh, and anyway, because they recognized who he was, so he runs down and Jesus. He said, "Don't tell who, people who I am." And then the guy says, "Please don't don't put us into Hades, into mm -hmm. the everlasting fire." They said they bid him put us into the swine. And so Jesus said, go, and they went into the swine, and you can see the slope of that hill. They ran headlong off the bank right there into the Sea of Galilee, and those that 2,000 swine drowned right over in that area. So they got their way. Don't put but then they you know, drowned. They, they forced the pigs to drown, but once they were drowned, I guess the demons went on somewhere else. Oh. Uh, yeah, they didn't. The, the pigs drowned, not the demons.